What's going on guys? My name is Jeff and this is Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to be doing a tank update on the Waterbox Aquarium. I hope everybody is having a fantastic day and if you're new to what we're doing here this is where I talk about everything reef tank related so if you love reef tanks like I do make sure you smash that subscribe button all right guys so in today's update of the water box reef tank we're going to be taking a look at all the livestock in the tank the equipment that is in the tank as well as in the sump and we're going to do a in-depth look at what I have going on in the sump for equipment and some ideas I have going forward so without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, guys, what is going on? So we're going to start off with what we have for livestock in the tank currently. And last week you saw us introduce the Mr. Fish, which is a Wyoming white. Um, but I've had him for quite a while now. He used to have a pair, but that pair, uh, well, the other half of the pair jumped out of the tank. Of the nano tank a while back when it was on my desk now that we have the water box we do have a completely open top which I'm not going to put a lid on it and I know that's kind of uh, playing Russian roulette with the fish but ultimately I'm going to try to focus on fish that aren't known jumpers even though clownfish have a tendency to jump uh, we're gonna focus on mostly fish that don't jump in this tank as far as livestock right now, I have a couple corals in here, um, Montiport Digitata, I have a couple of zoanthic colonies, uh, this one down here at the bottom isn't doing too hot, uh, that was actually a gift from Gabe's Reef, Tampa, and when I met him down at uh, Reef Apalooza, and I've been kind of nursing those guys back to health from a very long trip. Uh, currently live rock aquascape is not set in stone still working through that uh, we added more rock to the tank last week and i'm kind of okay with this portion of the tank but i definitely want to add more uh, to this section my take on aquascaping is a little bit different nowadays than it used to be um, i try to envision corals in the scape um, and what they would look like if they were growing out as opposed to uh, trying to achieve that with rock work. Old wives tale, I'm not sure if it's true or not, but if you build your aquascape closer to the surface, fish are less likely to jump out, and that might be something I put to the test, but I do want to allow enough space in there for a coral to have some type of growth in this tank. So we have, as far as livestock goes, some coral. Uh, not a whole lot, just kind of testing the water, seeing how the tank is doing right now. I do have a blood shrimp in here, as well as the clownfish which we put in last week um, a couple of snails i think about eight snails and eight hermit crabs nine hermit crabs and they're doing an okay job of keeping the tank maintained as of right now i did have a little bit of uh growth happening on the sand beds kind of hard to tell it's a little bit washed out right now but the little bit of hermit crabs and snails that I've added to the tank have kind of taken care of that problem uh, for the most part. Uh, still running with the Maxpec Gyre FX330. Uh, this pump is pretty awesome. I'm very happy with it. It does an amazing job of moving the water and you can kind of see a little bit that there's a lot of flow going on in here. Small tank, don't really feel like I need two of them at least at this point. Maybe once there's a little bit more rock in here and coral start to grow I might need some more. Uh, but very happy with this pump. Uh, did a review for Premium Aquatics and liked it so much that I ended up buying the pump. AI Primes, still rocking those. Not 100% certain that I'm going to keep those lights. Um, I may look to change things up in the future. For right now, it's fine. Uh, but I think I may go with some type of Aqualife setup. Some type of hybrid LED uh, T5 setup for this tank. But for right now... These do fine. Does create a little bit more strobing than I'm used to because I've had the Ecotech Radions on my tank, uh, the big tank, for a long time. Um, and with the AIs, there's just a little bit more strobing than I'm used to. Ultimately, you know, it's not that distracting, but at the same time, um, I want to have 
a tank that is growing coral and looks good and isn't too distracting. So um, not 100% certain on these lights yet, but for now they're working just fine. All right, so this is probably where the most amount of change has happened with the tank. This hasn't been cleaned up for this video. This is how it is um, every day when I look at it. So I didn't really want to show you guys something that isn't accurate. I'm not going to go clean my collection cup because I know I'm making a video. That's what the collection cup looks like right now in the skimmer. I got some salt creep on the back. Try to keep it as real as possible here on Mad Hatter's Reef. Still running the S1 for a return pump. Potentially going to be playing around with that, trying some different equipment out. Even with the S1, that is still a lot of return for this tank. I have it dialed down all the way to one, and it is still ripping. I don't know if I could do much more without creating problems in the tank. That's still a lot of pump, and maybe looking at something uh, that's a little bit dialed back. So down here, this is the, the uh, reservoir for the auto top off and I left this dry for a long time just because I wanted to see if there was any type of seal problem because I didn't want to dump a bunch of fresh water in here and then start mixing and then I have a brackish tank um, but the seals held true and I think I had the tank up and running for almost two months before I even started utilizing that uh, so we have a very small pump in the bottom uh, you can see actually you can't really see that well barely see it so right there is the sensors it has two optical eyes uh, one facing down one facing up I actually installed it backwards when I did the install on this the white one is usually the safety and the black one is usually your uh, one that's reading but ultimately um, they're I'm utilizing them the same way an optical eye is an optical eye it's distinguished by however you want to distinguish it as long as you hook it up correctly on the little control unit. I am going to move this hose probably to this section over here uh, because when it turns on, it turns on for a split second and where that sensor is right below it, um, it turns on and turns off. And sometimes it's creating bubbles as it's pouring the water in. And I don't have it all the way down here because that potentially could create a siphon. Um, there's a siphon break that comes with the auto top off I didn't use it, I don't know where I put it, can't find it, so I need to make sure that I have that hose well above the water line, and then when I fill this reservoir, I can't go to that hose or above that hose, because it'll create problems, I'll have a back siphon, and it'll just continue to flow into the return section. The Max Spec 330, that's the controller right there for that. I think I'm using random mode right now at about 60%, and that's doing plenty of flow for the tank. Um, there's not really any corals in there right now, so I don't really want to beat, you know, waste a bunch of energy for no reason. And as it stands right now, happy with it outside of, obviously, the wiring situation that I have going on. And speaking of the wire situation, I have openly admitted many, many times that cable management is my weakness. I am not good at it. I would like to be a lot better at it. Honestly, I think it just it comes down to discipline. I'm working on so many different things outside this tank that I just don't have the time or the discipline to get it right. This isn't that bad. I'll, I'll say that um, outside of the fact that I got some salt creep right here, which I have a solve for that coming tomorrow in the mail. Um, and it's creeping up on those wires a little bit. I decided what I'm going to do with this, I am going to do, I'm going to try my best to kind of harness this and make it a little bit more sense to it. Um, just because that sometimes my tank is going to be taken care of by somebody other than myself. And it needs to kind of be, you know, simple for those people that potentially are going to take care of my tanks. As far as the power strips, I ended up going with the vertical mounts. Uh, I was doing the horizontal mounts, which you can kind of see that Velcro right there that's still sitting there. They are falling down. Um, and I had to figure out a solve to kind of make it work a little bit better and the, the vertical mounting of the power strip seems to be a lot lot better has kind of solved the problem of the power strips falling and the velcro letting loose as far as down here at the bottom this is cable management fail 101 I kind of have some ideas that I'm kicking around for this 
I know that there's guys out there that are way better at this than I am as far as cable management goes. I th I'm thinking about using an ammo box, a plastic ammo box, installing a fan in it and putting all these power bricks in that to kind of maybe drilling the back so I can have the power cords going in and out. Um, that's also going to allow that fan to draw air from the back side and push it out the front. I'm not 100% certain um, if that's the direction I'm going to go in yet, but I really don't want to look at this every time that I open up this sump. Uh, but ultimately, right now, that's how it is. And uh, for the most part, um, I, it's somewhat organized. No, I'm not even going to pretend. That's not organized. That's a hot mess. Down here at the bottom, uh, some of you guys have asked me what I used for Velcro, or the two-sided Velcro. This is the stuff right here. You can pick it up on Amazon. Uh, it always comes smashed like this every time that I've ordered it. I don't know if it's a bunch of returns or some type of like salvage person that I'm buying this stuff from on Amazon, but this stuff works pretty good. Uh, this is heavy duty. I can hold up to 10 pounds per strip, so that's pretty rugged stuff. Um, and it works pretty well. So if you guys are looking to do something like what I've done with the uh, Velcro, two-sided Velcro, this is the stuff right here. Next thing to get the double-sided Velcro is the Finex controller. I'm thinking about putting that right below the power strips. So right here, that's where it would be. I thought about possibly putting it off to the side up here, but I'm really paranoid that that, even though that Velcro stuff works really well, that it would potentially fall into the sump and that would be a really bad time. So I think I'm going to go below the power strips. It's going to be off to the side and hopefully, you know, not be a huge issue. Obviously, it's not going to be, you know, accessible or easily accessible with all these wires coming down. But I think that's probably a better solve. I kind of want to leave. I want, I really want to leave this wall open. I don't have any plans on a controller for this yet. Uh, but if I do end up going the controller route, I would like to leave this wall open right here. I already kind of touched on it and you can see down in the back there, there's a fair amount of salt creep that is building up. Tomorrow I have a delivery coming where I have some AquaClear 110 filters coming in and I'm going to cut them to size and hopefully it's going to eliminate some of that salt creep for building up and put it going on to the electrical right there in the back wall. Um, hitting the black back wall because that obviously will deteriorate that over time. Hitting these pipes just looking like garbage and hopefully that fixes it. Still playing around with the Bubble Magnus protein skimmer. It's a pretty solid protein skimmer. This is about a week's worth of skimmate in here. Um, some guys have said that it's a little bit finicky. I think there's times where it really is creating some really good skimmate and other times that not so much. Um, but really in a reef tank you don't necessarily want to be stripping the water all the time. There's a lot of folks now that actually have their protein skimmers hooked up to a timer or some type of a controller and have it shut down for a couple hours during the night. So like corals like your LPS corals or even your mushrooms and zoanthids can kind of um, enjoy that little bit of dirty water that's floating around in the tank because um, Nowadays, we keep our aquariums almost too clean. I know there's still people out there, myself included, that have some dirty tanks going on. Um, but for the most part, our tanks are way cleaner with the equipment that we have nowadays as opposed to 10 years ago when I got started in the hobby. This is probably not going to be um, the end protein skimmer that ends up in this. I know that I'm still kicking around the idea of using the NIOS on this build and I'm still considering it. I think it would really be um, interesting to be to have a NIOS protein skimmer and the torque reactor in the same aquarium and kind of see what kind of um, filtration system that those two pieces of equipment together produce. There is one more thing that I want to talk about and that is the lighting in the sun. So you can barely see it right here. Um, this was a light that I installed hoping that this was going to be enough and it's motion activated um, it's actually I used the velcro tape on this as well and 
it's not it's okay it's not great I picked this up at I believe Lowe's and it's battery operated there's no wiring I figured maybe you know it was worth a shot I think it was something like 10 bucks um, tried it out not a hundred percent you know in love with it ultimately um, so what I ended up picking up and you can kind of see it wrapped around the top is these LED light strips and I've seen these on Amazon for years uh, people use them for all sorts of different projects and I tried them out they are a one watt LED light it's an eight foot strip they call it a tape light it has a switch on it not motion activated or anything like that I think eventually I could put like a sensor on the door and as I open up the doors that the lights would kick on but this is what it looks like right here I picked this up at Home Depot and it has double-sided tape on the back you peel the double-sided tape off and you stick it where you want it it holds up I was actually really impressed I thought that potentially I was gonna be constantly fighting keeping that light where it was going to be I had full intentions of gluing it to the inside of the stand but I haven't had a single problem with it yet I shared this with the folks on Instagram this past week and uh, definitely impressed with this product uh, it's 20 bucks so it's a little more expensive than I would have liked to uh, paid for lighting in my sump especially lighting that doesn't really do anything other than just allow me to see what's going on um, but I'm very happy with it and I'd definitely buy it again so if you're looking to light up your sump like I have um, here with the water box this is the stuff right here it's commercial electric uh, it's a soft white it's 8 foot LED for this stand and you can cut it you can wear it I guess there's little marks on the tape where it can be cut and it's okay so I can actually kill it um, and it works great very very happy with this product alright guys so that is our look at the current status of the water box build and I am so far very very happy with this tank I've been trying to feed it a lot as of late to try to dirty it up but I think adding that rock from the nano tank is probably going to do exactly what I need this tank to do because I want to start adding some coral to it and getting some more fish in there and just kind of get this guy up and running and see what kind of coral reef i can produce with this tank so all in all i think that this is probably one of the most clean builds that i've ever done mostly because i am not the one responsible for the build Waterbox Aquarium has put together a system that is absolutely amazing. And I definitely see more Waterbox Aquariums in my future. But for now, we're gonna focus on this one and make sure that we give it everything that it needs to be a successful reef tank. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for today's video. I wanna thank you guys for joining me. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to mind the bell. I'll see you guys next week right here with a brand new video.